The polka dot is the pattern that, in my opinion, is most strongly associated with vintage style. Originally, the dots began as decorative features in delicate woven and lace. It wasn't until the early 1850s that printing machines could cope with the design. At the same time, a new dance, the polka, was making its way through Europe's ballrooms and eventually made its way to the U.S. By the early 1920s, a small-scale polka dot decorated the fine cottons and the silks of blouses, bows, and day dresses. In 1926, Norma Smallwood wore an adorable dotted swimsuit as she became the first indigenous woman to win Miss America. In the 1930s, the polka dot was created in interesting color combinations and on flowing chiffon to match the sophisticated glamour of the times. By the 1940s, polka dot prints were used in couture houses such as Christian Dior. In fact, several of Dior's new look designs from 1947 were polka dot prints. In the 1950s, the polka dot transitioned a bit from the sophisticated look of the 1940s to a post-war pattern that was fun and frivolous again, larger in size and even more bold in color. Jumping to the present day, polka dots are around, usually more so in spring and summer and usually in the classic black and white color combo that I am working with today. This is not my first time working with polka dot. I've done it once before and I made a skirt that I love and wear every chance that I get. However, this is my very first time working with silk. You seen in the very beginning how I lined up the selvage edges and pinned them together, measured out my grain lines. I wanted to make this dress perfect. I bought this fabric on a shopping trip to Atlanta with my husband. I will link if you haven't seen that fun adventure, but this was the first of the fabric that I used and I wanted this dress to be perfect. And when I say perfect, I know that there's no such thing. What I really mean is I wanna do my absolute best. No shortcuts, just hard work, neat work. And I'm working with a vintage Vogue reproduction pattern, which is a copy of an original design from 1953. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find this pattern. I love when I can offer that to you because I usually sew true vintage patterns that could be hard to find. So this is it and now I am getting to work. Once I had all of the pieces cut out, I decided to start with the skirt first. I knew that I wanted to hang on the dress form for a day or so before I got to work on the hem. So I thought the, the easiest thing to do at this point would be to seam up all of those skirt edges. And that's what you see me doing here. I'm taking my time. I had so many pins in this because the silk shifts and moves so much, which I didn't know was a thing <laughs> um, of just how hard it is to work with silk. Here you see me pressing those seams open I've learned how important this step is in your sewing work. I know a lot of times I really just want to be sewing, but there is so much more that goes into sewing that does not take place at the sewing machine. And so I made sure to get a nice clean press on my seams. The seaming of the skirt pieces was going so well and everything's moving along so fast. I was so very pleasant. I really enjoyed the process. Um, I'm still in day one of this project, so that was just awesome. And then that's when we came into our first problem. I cut the bodice pieces two at a time with the fabric folded. And if you can see here, these pieces just do not match the pattern piece. They shifted and they moved so much and so thankfully, I had a little bit of this polka dot fabric left because I had to recut the bodice. And I cut those pieces one at a time. Um, I don't think it's possible, at least not for someone with my inexperience, to cut them two at a time. And so for the bodice, we were basically starting from scratch. If you have any tips or tricks for working with silk, please feel free to share those in the comment box below. As I went along, I realized that ironing and starching the fabric pretty heavily definitely helped. So once I had the piece cut out that you see here big enough for the bodice piece, 
I took it to the ironing board and I starched it so good so that it wouldn't move. And I used a lot of pins to hold the pattern piece in place. You see me here measuring out the grain line. I really wanted this dress to be a representation of how far I've come over the past, what, almost two years that I've been sewing or a little over two years that I've been sewing. I really wanted to be able to see my growth and my skills um, in this garment. And some of that is just having patience for the fact that sewing is a slow activity. We see so many YouTube videos now with, I sewed 20 pieces in five days and that whole thing. And I'm just like, oh goodness, you're missing the point of why we sew. <laughs> it's slow fashion, not fast fashion. And so it's sped up here, but in real life, that, that was a long process because I really took my time cutting those pattern pieces out. And here they go. And now they are identical. I have my darts chalked in. I pin them in place and so stitch them. And then I stitched the bodice at center back using lots of pins to hold everything in place and so much starch. That definitely made this a lot easier. But like I said, if you have any tips or tricks of working with silk, then please feel free to share those. And now we are back at the sewing machine for that center back seam. And we are back on track. One little, one little hiccup, but we are definitely back on track and good things are bound to happen. So this is the center back seam. And I'm very happy with the fact that none of the polka dots are cut off. So I think that looks great. I'm really happy with it. Since the fabric has been starched, it's so much easier to work with. I need to press this seam open better than that. So got to do that. And then we'll start working on the front bodice. And here is that piece. It has that interesting tuck that makes it where it's going to have a pleat at the center front coming down from the side. This is what makes this dress special. This is what attracted me to this dress. So that's the part you see me working on now. And it was really not very complicated at all. And I will say the instructions in this pattern are very good. I would definitely consider this a beginner friendly sewing pattern. Um, it was pretty easy. The only the only real trouble I would say is for the gussets, but maybe those aren't as much trouble for someone else as they are for me. You'll see more of that coming up soon. But here we are um, getting the back bodice attached to the front bodice. So far, so good. And these polka dots are looking adorable. So I'm pinning here, matching up the notches at the shoulder. They do instruct you to put some easing stitches at the shoulder seam and so after I match up the notches and pin that's exactly what you see me doing now is um, gathering down those easing stitches to sort of make it all fit in the end I, I don't know um, if it looks as neat as it could or if that is really just because of my fabric choice this really flimsy silk but I don't particularly like the way it looks at the shoulder where it's, gather, where it's, I don't even know what to call it, where it's eased in that way. There was like one little spot where mine doesn't look perfect, but the other one does and it's not a big deal, I guess. And so moving on, here I am cutting out the interfacing that is for um, the bodice front and back and facing. So that's what I'm doing now. And we'll get all that stitched in place and get it attached to the neck edge of the bodice. So once I had the facing pinned to itself, um, I did have to finish the, the edge that was going to be exposed on that, as you see that I'm doing here. So I folded that back and stitched it down. And then it was ready to go onto the bodice itself. And so that took a while because there was so much 
painting and I wanted to make sure everything was right. I matched up all of the seams perfectly. I just really took my time so that way this could look neat. And I was still just kind of nervous about how everything was gonna lay with this whole drape. That's the main feature of this dress. It's not something I've ever done before. And so I just made sure to take my time. Um, that has lately been my biggest complaint with my sewing work is that I just never feel like it's as neat as it can be. And so I've seriously, I've seriously been working on that aspect of it and not trying to um, shortcut on those details that really do make a difference, like your facings. And so once I got all of this pinned in place, which took forever and a million pins, um, I stitched it on and I also understitched it, which with this style, it definitely needed. And I'm so glad that I did that. So like I said, it was a timely process to get this in place because I had to keep stopping to remove the pins. I don't ever really try and run over pins. I try to avoid that as much as possible. Some people say you can or you can't. I'm not sure, it's just not something I'm willing to risk. And for some reason, if I'm not careful and paying attention, the pins will get stuck down inside of the machine in this like little weird spot. And so I'm always just hyper aware of the pins. And so it was a lot of stopping and starting while getting this facing stitched on. And then I, sewed it all down at the seam by hand so that it would um, not turn up when I'm putting it on. So that's what you see me doing here, just sitting and stitching this all down by hand. My hand stitching is getting a lot better and I used to avoid it and now I'm always looking for reasons to hand sew things. And so this is where we are with it. The skirt is hanging. It's been hanging on the dress form, but I wanted to see what the bodice looked like on the dress form. Um, I think this drape is coming out really good so far. I cannot wait to see how it looks when it's filled in on the body. So yeah, we're doing good. I think now is the time we sew the side seams. Yep, that's what I'm doing here. And then next is the drama of the gussets that put this project on hold for two or three weeks. So this is where we are with the bodice. It looks really good. I think I have a few little issues that happen with the facing that I'm gonna try and fix. It's mainly because this fabric is so slippery and my inexperience with working with something like this is my very first time. But otherwise, I love this pattern. I tried this on and it fits well. Um, a little bit big here but it's hard to tell without the zipper and I'm sure when it's attached to the skirt it's gonna pull it a little tighter so I don't know yet but it's time for the gussets and that's what I'm most afraid of I've actually scrapped a dress before because of gussets and so I am committed to seeing this through especially done with my expensive fabric that I picked up on my shopping trip to Atlanta, which I will link below if you want to see that. But yeah, time for the gussets. I'm going to go read the instructions thoroughly, probably watch a tutorial on YouTube or something, something because I don't know. I don't even know how this works, but we're going to figure it out. So I taped the pattern tissue the gusset in place just to sort of see how this is really supposed to look and I read the directions better um, so you do between the dots first and then readjust the top and pin it and sew it and so that makes a little sense but it just still doesn't make a lot of sense I really don't understand the point of gussets if you have any tips about gussets please share them here we are a few weeks later. I finally got those gussets put in. This is the most horrible job I've ever done on anything. But I had unpicked them and put them back in so many times and I've just done a number on this fabric and I just wanted to be past this part. And so I just put them in the best I could. What I'm hoping is that because it's 
under the arm it won't be that noticeable I then hem the edge of the sleeve which at this point has this wavy effect if you have any information on how I can avoid this wavy effect like does it have something to do with tension or I don't know I'm gonna try and iron it out but I've got that in the facing is in and stitched down I'm pretty sure this well this is based it and I'm pretty sure our next step is going to be attaching the skirt and it is so I'm gonna work on getting the skirt pinned to this bodice so yes it went from being the dream perfect dress with out any flaws to the underarm gussets killing those dreams but I was able to iron out the waves on the sleeves a bit and for the most part it does look fairly neat am I a hundred percent thrilled no is my confidence injured a little yes but we persevere over here that's what we do and I learn from every single one of these makes and that's the point and the fact that I enjoy it too and I do even when things don't go as well as I would had hoped or I just still enjoy the process there is something about creating something with your own two hands something so tangible as a garment and so I do enjoy it am I still waiting for that make where I'm like yes this is so perfect I totally am but the way my personality is set up is once that happens once I make that garment that I'm just blown away by I'll probably be overselling because that's just how I am so you've seen me attach the bodice to the skirt and now I am hemming the bottom of the dress so now where we are with the dress is it is attached to the skirt. I did the hem. There is nothing left to do but put in a zipper and then put some gross grain ribbon in the waist with some hooks and eyes. And I have some true vintage hooks and eyes that I'm gonna use for that. And then that's all that's left to get this dress completed. So I'm stitching the zipper in by hand, which is what I do now. and. I like it way better than doing it with the machine. I have more control over where the stitches are going and it's nice and pleasant and peaceful. So here I am stitching that zipper in by hand, which is what I'm gonna do for the gross grain ribbon. And then I'm gonna put this dress on and take a cute picture. So here we go. And here she is all finished. I really, really love this dress. Is it perfect? No, my hem's uneven, I notice in this video, but my husband loved it. He's the guy behind the camera and he thought I looked beautiful. He said he couldn't believe that I made that myself and neither could I really, but probably gonna make another one and I'll see you in that video that is soon and sure to come.